This is a beginning to protein synthesis, which starts with transcription and the first step being initiation. A promoter is a specific DNA sequence that the RNA polymerase binds to. The initiation site is a small sequence of the promoter where transcription will begin. <laughs> RNA polymerase unwinds the DNA about 13 base pairs at a time and reads the template strands in a 3 to 5 direction. RNA polymerase adds new nucleotides to the three ends of a growing strand. By complementary base pairing, RNA polymerase adds new nucleotides to RNA molecule. RNA polymerase uses ribonucleoside triphosphates such as ATP, UTP, GTP, and CTP as substrates and catalyzes formation of a phosphodiester bond between them. While RNA grows as a single strand and molecule, two DNA strands rewind. RNA transcript is anti-parallel to the DNA template strand. RNA polymerase continues to transcribe the DNA strand. There are three possible ways for termination to occur. The first way is for the RNA polymerase to reach a specific base sequence called the termination site. Just as initiation sites in the DNA template strand specify initiation, termination sites specify termination. The second way for termination to occur is for the transcript to fall away from the DNA template and RNA polymerase on its own. A third way for termination to occur is for a helper protein to pull the transcript away from the DNA strand. Before translation occurs, the mRNA transcript needs to be processed. The first way for the transcript to be modified is through RNA splicing. Introns are removed so that the protein can be functional. SNRPs are small nuclear ribonuclear protein particles that bind short stretches of DNA at the 5' prime and 3' prime exon intron boundary. A large RNA protein complex called a spliceosome formed from protein and SNRPs, SNRPs cuts out free mRNA, releases introns, and joins the ends of the exons together to produce mature mRNA. Spliceosomes make a cut between the 5' prime exon introns. Introns form a closed loop known as a lariat loop. Three prime, the 3' prime exon is cleaved and spliced to the 5' prime exon. Excised intron is degraded in the nucleus. Mature mRNA is transported for translation. But before translation, the um, the mRNA is modified. A 5' prime cap or a G cap is added to the 5' prime end of pre mRNA as it is transcribed. The G cap is a chemically modified molecule of GTP. Then a poly A tail is added to the 3' prime end of the pre mRNA at the end of transcription. This is a sequence of 100 
to 300 adenine nucleotides. Once the mRNA strand reaches the cytoplasm, translation begins. The initiation complex is formed. The initiation complex is made up of charged tRNA and smaller ribosomal subunits which both bind to mRNA. The small ribosomal subunit binds non-covalently to the strand. After binding, the small subunit moves along mRNA until it reaches AUG, the start codon. The anticodon of methionine charged tRNA binds to start codon by complementary base pairing. Large subunit joins the complex. Methionine charged tRNA is in the P site of the ribosome, while the A site is where the second mRNA codon is. A or amino acid site is where the charged anticodon binds to mRNA and lines up the correct amino acids to be added to the growing polypeptide chain. P site or polypeptide site is where the tRNA adds amino acids to and holds the chain. E or exit site is where tRNA is before it is released from the ribosome. Elongation begins. The ribosome continues to move along the strand. The ribosome binds to charged tRNA with its anticodon with the correct codon and mRNA. When proper binding occurs, hydrogen bonds form between the three base pairs. The large subunit catalyzes two reactions. It breaks the bond between methionine and its tRNA in the P site and forms a peptide bond between methionine and the amino acid attached to tRNA in the A site. A charged tRNA whose anticodon is complementary to the second codon of mRNA enters the A site. The methionine becomes the amino or N-terminus because the polypeptide grows in the amino to carboxyl direction. A second amino acid is now bound to methionine but remains attached to its tRNA at the A site. After the first tRNA releases its methionine, it moves to the A site and then leaves the ribosome. It moves to cytosol and becomes charged with another methionine. The second tRNA now has a pep now is a dipeptide and is shifted to the P site as the ribosome moves one codon along mRNA in the five prime, prime to three prime direction. Translation terminates when a stop codon UAA, UAG, or UGA enters the A site. These codons bind a protein release factor which hydrolyzes a bond between the polypeptide and tRNA in the P site. The release factor terminates translation by binding to a codon when it enters the A site. It frees tRNA from the P site and disconnects the polypeptide. Protein C-terminus is the last amino acid to join the chain. Its N-terminus is usually methionine. Protein's amino acid sequence has information specifying its conformation, the shape it will have, and where it is going to go in the cell. mRNA and ribosomal subunits separate. For transcription, promoter and terminator sequences in DNA give signal. For translation, start and stop codons and mRNA give signal for initiation and termination. The polypeptide needs to be modified after translation so that it could be a proper functioning protein. Protein can either stay the same or be modified further. If there is no signal sequence, the protein will stay where it was synthesized. Signal sequences and proteins direct them to their cellular destinations. Protein synthesis always begins on free ribosomes floating in the cytoplasm. 
As the polypeptide leaves the ribosome, it may fold into its 3D structure and perform its cellular role. A newly formed polypeptide may contain a signal sequence, which is a short stretch of amino acids that indicates where in the cell the polypeptide belongs. Some proteins will have signal sequences that target them to different organelles, including mitochondria, plastids, and peroxisomes. If a polypeptide carries a specific signal of a 510 hydrophobic amino acids uh, and at its end terminus, it will be directed to the RER which processes it. Some of the proteins need to be chemically modified once they reach their cellular destination. This is important for final functioning of a protein. There are three ways it can be chemically modified. Proteolysis. Cleaving polypeptide chain allows different fragments to fold into different shapes. Cleaving signal sequence from growing polypeptide chain in ER prevents protein from moving back out of ER. Glycosylation. Adding sugars to proteins for targeting and recognition. In ER and Golgi apparatus, enzymes catalyze addition of sugar residues and short sugar chains to certain R groups on proteins as they pass through. Phosphorylation, addition of phosphate groups to alter shape of protein, catalyzed by protein kinases. Charged phosphate groups change conformation of targeted proteins, expose active site of enzyme or binding site of another protein. Many ribosomes can transcribe one sequence at the same time. This speeds up translation. A functional protein is different from the polypeptide chain that is released from the ribosome. It may need to be moved far from the site of synthesis in the cytoplasm, moved into an organelle, or even secreted from the cell. New chemical groups can be added to help the protein function. Chemical signals in proteins direct them to where they are supposed to be in the cell. They, this folds them into a 3D shape. The sequence of amino acids and factors like polarity and charge of the R groups determine the new protein. The proteins can either finish translation and leave the cytoplasm. Proteins are sent to the nucleus, mitochondria, plastids, or peroxisomes depending on the instructions they receive from their sequence. Translation can also stop, go to the ER, and finish synthesis there. After protein synthesis is completed, such proteins may be left in the ER or sent to the cytoplasms through the Golgi apparatus. They are secreted from the cell through vesicles that leave the plasma membrane if they lack instructions. If proteins don't have specific signals, they are usually secreted from the cell through vesicles that fuse with the plasma membrane. This process is exocytosis.